online video lecture and today we're covering the cardiovascular system heart. So let's go ahead and begin. Okay. So heart, anatomy, approximately the size of a fist, location in the mediastinum between second rib and fifth intercostal space. On a superior surface of diaphragm, uh, two thirds to the left of the mediastinal line, anterior to the vertebral column, posterior to the sternum, enclosed in a special sac, uh, uh, the um, fibrous sac called pericardium, that is a double wall. Okay, so um, you can see on this diagram a location of the heart. Right, so uh, it's um, slightly to the left, posterior to the sternum. Um, it's an. Um, so here's your first rib. That's the second rib. And um, right here is your fifth intercostal space. Also, inferior part of the heart, kind of resting. Uh, on a diaphragm, on the superior surface of the diaphragm. Pericardium. Pericardium is the um, sac that covering the heart. It's made of several layers. First, superficial fibrous pericardium that protects, anchors, and prevents overfilling of the heart. So on the diagram, it's just this on the surface. Underneath fibrous pericardium, you will find serous pericardium. I want to remind you that the serous membrane is made of epithelial and connective tissue. And serous membrane always double layered. So we have parietal layer that lines the internal surface of the fibrous pericardium. So here's your fibrous pericardium. And then we have a parietal pericardium, this layer over here. Then you have pericardial cavity, and there is a fluid, serous fluid in this cavity, and then visceral pericardium that cover organ itself. Visceral pericardium has another name, epicardium. It's on external surface of the heart. Parietal and visceral layer layers are separated by fluid-filled pericardial cavity that decreases friction. Then we have epicardium that is the same as visceral uh, pericardium, visceral layer of the serous pericardium, uh, deep to epicardium is myocardium, spiral bundles of cardiac muscle cells. Fibrous skeleton of the heart, um, crisscrossing, interlacing layer of connective tissue that anchors cardiac muscle fibers, supports great vessels and valves, and limits spread of action potential to specific parts. So myocardium, the word myo means muscle. So it's a muscular layer. So it's a cardiac muscle, but it's not just muscles. You do have fibrous skeleton that uh, protects uh, and anchors, right? Uh, cardiac muscle cells support vessels, right? So that's a myocardium. And endocardium continues with epithelial lining of blood vessels. So that's the deepest layer of a heart wall. So, um, so endocardium will be right here. So let's review again. We have fibrous pericardium, the most superficial layer, then parietal pericardium, parietal pericardium, visceral pericardium or epicardium, then this bulk of muscles, myocardium and endocardium. So if you heard about myocardial infarction, infarction means death. So then this cells of cardiac muscles die, uh, we call it uh, myocardial infarct infarction because this layer is called myocardium. Uh, chambers. 
you have two chambers in the heart, two atria separated internally by the inter, interatrial septum. Um, if you look at the surface of the heart, so here's the atria, sorry, and here's the ventricle, here's the left atria and left ventricle. And you will see separation between atria and ventricle. This is shown here in green. It's a coronary sinus or atrioventricular groove. Encircles the junction of the atria and ventricle. Now, uh, on the atria, we have auricles. Auricles increase atrial volume. Two ventricles separated by interventricular septum. Anterior and posterior interventricular sulci mark the position of the septum externally. So if you go back and you look at the, uh, this is right ventricle and this is a left ventricle. And this is a, a sulcus. It's called anterior interventricular sulcus. Inter means between two ventricles. So where you have this uh, sulcus and on the posterior um, surface, you have posterior interventricular sulcus. Now this sulcus show you a position of interventricular septum. So here's the septum that separates right ventricle from left ventricle. Now remember when we talk about atria, we also said that we have um, right atria and left atria, and they se uh, separated by septum as well. So you see this wall over here? So this is interatrial septum. This is interventricular septum. Atria are receiving chambers. Walls are rigid by pectinate muscles. Vessels entering the right atrium include superior vena cava. So because atria are receiving chambers, you need to receive blood, right? So what are those blood vessels that bring blood to the atria? So let's talk about the right side first. So here's the right atrium and blood vessels that enter right atrium are gonna be this one, superior vena cava inferior vena cava and coronary sinus. And superior vena cava gonna return blood to the heart from um, your um, arms, um, upper part of your body, your neck and your head and your brain. Inferior vena cava from low part of your body. Coronary sinus gonna return blood from coronary circulation, blood vessels located on your heart itself. So your heart is supplied by blood vessels and uh, you need to pick up carbon dioxide, waste product um, that you collect from cells of the heart and you bring this deoxygenated blood back to right atria through coronary sinus. Now vessels entering left atrium include right pulmonary veins and left pulmonary veins. So here's the opening. And for right pulmonary veins, so opening is going to be somewhere right in the, on the right side of atrium. Um, now, you see how some blood vessels are blue and some are red? This is just represent oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. So we color blood vessels in blue to show that we have lots of carbon dioxide in the blood. And if blood vessels are red, then they reach in oxygen. If we return from lungs, if pulmonary veins, we return from lungs, that means we bring oxygenated blood back to the heart. And another thing is uh, blood vessels that carry blood away from the heart. So if you carry it away from the heart, you call it uh, artery. And if you return blood back to the heart, you call it veins. So that's why superior vena cava or cava and inferior vena cava. So those are veins and pulmonary veins. Even they, they, they carry oxygenated blood, but they still return blood back to the heart. That's why we call them veins. 
Uh, ventricles are discharging chambers. Walls are rigid by trabecular cornea. That's uh, muscles called trabecular cornea. We have papillary muscles that project into uh, ventricular cavities. So trabecular cornea uh, muscles right here, those muscles, right? And those are papillary muscles. Vessels leaving the right ventricle include pulmonary trunk, right? So here's our pulmonary trunk. And guess what? Because we're going away from the heart, that's the artery. And vessels leaving the left ventricle is the biggest blood vessel in your body called aorta. Heart valves. Um, well, first, what is the function of valves? They ensure unidirectional blood flow through the heart. We have two AV valves. AV means atrioventricular, so valves between atria and ventricles, shown here in yellow color. They prevent backflow into the atria when ventricles contract. So imagine this ventricles contract. So you start pumping blood and you, when you pump blood, you want a blood to flow inside the blood vessels, not back to the atria. That's why this uh, valve will be closed when ventricle contract to prevent backflow of blood to the atria. Now we call them AV valves, but they have also other names. The tricuspid valve on the right side and bicuspid or mitral valve on the left side. So uh, remember uh, tri before bi. So we have tricuspid first, then bicuspid. Chordae tendinae are fibrous cords, so those fibrous cords of connective tissue that anchor AV valves, cusp to papillary muscles. So you anchor those um, valves to papillary muscle because you don't want those valves to prolapse back to the atria when ventricles contract. So they prevent valve prolapse. And we have two more valves, semi-lunar valve, uh, valves or SL valve. And they located between ventricles and blood vessels. Prevent backflow into the ventricles when ventricle relax. So when ventricle contracts, they push blood to pulmonary trunk and aorta. And when ventricles contract, you don't want a blood flow backwards, right? So SL valve, uh, aortic, semilunar valve, it's right here between left ventricle and aorta and pulmonary semilunar valve between right ventricle and pulmonary trunk. So four valves. So here you see all four valves here, tricuspid, bicuspid or mitral or a right and left AV valves and aortic and pulmonary valve. Um, when we look at the uh, surface of the heart, you will see lots of uh, different landmarks. Um, now I have another video that I recorded where I cover those um, parts of the heart and blood vessel associated with the heart. So please watch that video uh, because right now I will not go over the um, external or internal anatomy of the heart in details. All right, so this is a frontal section of the heart where you can see some of the uh, external structures again and some internal structures, including all the valves that we just discussed. Pathway of blood flow through the heart. The heart is two side-by-side -side pumps. Right side is the pump for the pulmonary circuit. That means to the lungs, vessels carry blood to and from the lungs. And left side is a pump for the systemic circuit. Vessels that carry blood to and from all body tissues. Um, so on this diagram, again, we will use a blue color. 
for oxygen poor in carbon dioxide rich blood and red color for oxygen rich carbon dioxide poor blood. So it's right there. So you can see that uh, here's your entire body. And after gas exchange, when your cells uh, release carbon dioxide and waste product to your bloodstream, those capillaries unite and blood from your cells returns back to the heart, to the right side, and um, specifically right atrium. From right atrium, blood flows to right ventricle and to the pulmonary circuit, to the lungs. Um, in the lungs, you get rid of carbon dioxide, you pick up oxygen, and blood rich in oxygen returns back now to the left side of the heart, left atrium, then left ventricle, and then to aorta and to your entire body. So here we can uh, read the pathway of blood through the heart. So we're gonna start with right atrium, then tricuspid valve, right ventricle, a pulmonary valve, pulmonary trunk, pulmonary arteries, lungs. This way we get gas exchange, get rid of carbon dioxide, pick up oxygen. From lungs, pulmonary veins to left atrium, uh, from left atrium through bicuspid valve to left ventricle, then through aortic valve to aorta and into systemic circulation. Equal volumes of blood are pumped to the pulmonary and systemic circuits. Pulmonary circuit is a short, low pressure circulation because your lungs are really in a short distance from the heart. Systemic circuit, blood encounters much resistance in a long pathway. So systemic cir circuit is longer. Um, there it's, it's long, it's a high blood pressure circulation. And anatomy of the ventricles reflect these differences. Now, if you look at the walls of ventricles, the right ventricle wall is thin compared to the wall of left ventricle. Why? Because when left ventricle contracts, you need to create enough pressure to send this blood through aorta to your head, to your uh, torso, to your uh, leg and feet, right? So it's a long circuit to go. When, so you need to produce a lots of force. So you need strong muscle to do it. When right ventricle contract, you send blood vessel there to the lungs. Lungs are pretty close to the heart, so you don't need to generate that much force and you don't need uh, really strong, uh, thick muscle. Now, so we have pulmonary circulation, blood flows to the lungs, systemic circulation, blood flows to every part of your body. Part of the systemic circulation is coronary circulation. The functional blood supply to the heart muscle itself. Arterial supply varies considerably and contains many anastomoses or junctions among branches. Collateral roots provide additional roots for blood delivery. That means if you look at the artery of the heart, for different people, it might different people, it might be a little bit different. It's not exactly the same for every single patient because we have lots of junctions between those uh, branches. Uh, but we're gonna look at the main coronary uh, blood vessels. We're gonna start with arteries. Right and left coronary arteries. So this one is uh, left coronary artery, and this is right coronary artery. Right coronary artery is pretty long, and it's located uh, inside this atrioventricular sulcus between atria and ventricle. Left coronary artery is pretty short blood vessel. It splits almost immediately into blood vessels that goes down and it's called anterior interventricular artery and circumflex artery. 
that kind of uh, encircle the, uh, the heart. We also have marginal arteries. So here's our right marginal artery. Um, and um, that's, that's all the artery we need to cover, right? We need to cover anterior interventricular. Um, so we have marginal, circumflex, anterior, and posterior interventricular arteries. So again, uh, right coronary, left coronary, uh, circumflex, anterior interventricular, and in the posterior side, there is posterior interventricular artery. Then we need to return blood back to the heart, right? So we will pick up carbon dioxide waste product and we return back to the uh, right atrium. And blood vessels that return blood um, from systemic circulation and from coronary circulation called veins. So here's the major veins that we need to know. Um, this is anterior view. On anterior view, we have this great cardiac vein. On the posterior side, we have middle cardiac vein. And uh, on the right side, small cardiac vein. So great, middle, small, um, and uh, small, great. So uh, small, great, middle. And on the posterior side, we have a large flat vein called coronary sinus. So all those veins, they drain into this coronary sinus. All of them drain inside the sinus. And then this sinus drains blood into right atrium. Coronary blockage. It's a coronary artery disease, but when we build up a plug and restrict blood flow, to the heart muscle and it can cause heart attack. So here's angiogram, you see the uh, coronary blood vessels and here is a blockage. This is blockage in circumflex, uh, circumflex artery. And what happened now this part of muscle, lack of oxygen. So it's go to ischemia first, low oxygen level. And if uh, blood uh, flow is not restored, it can lead to uh, tissue uh, death. So tissue will die. That's our myocardial uh, infarction or heart attack. Cardiac muscle cells. Um, that's a special cells. Uh, some, uh, of course, as, any, uh, as muscle cells, they can contract, right? Um, um, but there is also, so we have two types of cells. Uh, cells that contract, myocardial contractile cells, and cells that can generate electrical signal called myocardial conducting cells. Uh, now, all cells of muscle uh, tissue are orthorhythmic cells. So they can initiate electrical potential. Or I would say, I'm sorry, not all of them. Orthorhythmicity um, is the characteristic of these conducting cells. So those conducting cells are not nerve cells. Those are muscle cells that can generate electrical impulse. Now, between adjacent um, contractile cells, we have intercalated disc. Um, those are special type of junction. It's an electrical synapse that allow electrical signal to pass from one cell to another and synchronize contraction. Now, uh, when we look at this intrinsic conduction system and on its diagram, it's shown in um, this yellow color and it does look like nerves, but remember those are not nervous tissue. This is cardiac muscle cells, but it's special type of cells, conducting cells. Uh, and intrinsic conduction system is a network of non-contractile orthorhythmic cells that initiate and distribute impulses to coordinate the depolarization and contraction of the heart. And we're gonna start with the first uh, set of cells called SA node. So here's SA node, sinoatrial node or pacemaker that generate impulses. And it's located inside right atrium 
right where superior vena cava next to the entrance of superior vena cava. So here's our superior vena cava. And right next to it, we have SA node. So normal um, uh, heart rhythm called sinus rhythm. That means we have normal pacemaker. Then impulses moves uh, from um, right atrium to left atrium um, through the walls of the atria. And then it moves to another node called AV node, atrioventricular. Impulse pauses for 0.1 seconds at this atrioventricular node, giving time to atria to contract. Right? From AV node, we have AV bundle. Connects atria to the ventricle. From AV bundle, we have bundle branches, right branch and left branch. Conduct the impulses through the interventricular septum and then Purkinje fibers. Depolarize the contractile cells in both ventricles. And if you don't know yet what depolarization means, just uh, think about it as carrying electrical impulse to the ventricle. All right, so here we have this conduction system. SA node, AV node, AV bundle, bundle branches, and Purkinje fibers. And electrical signals just uh, flows along this conducting system. And your heart cannot contract without this electrical impulse. Okay, so here we have sequence of uh, excitation SA node or pacemaker generate impulses about 75 times per minute. That is called sinus rhythm. Then AV node. Um, um, okay, it says depolarize over here, but I'm going to just use easy language. So it's, it can also generate impulses, but instead of 75 times per minute, it's make impulses 50 times per minute if we don't have SA node. Then we go to AV bundles, only electrical connection between atria and ventricles. And this will be important because if this bundle is damaged, there is no connection between atria and ventricle. That means electricity cannot spread through ventricular walls and ventricles cannot contract. Right and left bundle branches, two pathways in the interventricular septum that carry the impulses towards the apex of the heart. Purkinje fibers complete the pathway into the apex and ventricular walls. AV bundle and Purkinje fibers, they also can generate impulses. But look, SA node generate what? 75 times per, uh, beats per minute. AV node generates 50 beats per minute. If we don't have SA node and AV node functioning, then bundle and Purkinje fibers can generate impulses, but that's gonna be only 30 times per minute. So it says in the absence of AV node input, that would not be enough to sustain life. Homeostatic imbalances, defective SA node. So what happened if pacemaker is not working? It's called sick sinus syndrome a type of heart rhythm disorder. Sick sinus syndrome causes low heartbeats, causes long periods between heartbeats or irregular heartbeats, arrhythmias. It can be also ectopic focus when abnormal pacemaker takes over. If normal pacemaker is not working, then AV node takes over and we call it junctional rhythm. Now heartbeat gonna be way slower, only 40, 60 beats per minute. Most people with sick sinus syndrome have few or no symptoms. Symptoms may be mild or come and go, making them difficult to recognize at first. Signs and symptoms of sick sinus syndrome may include chest pain or discomfort, confusion, dizziness and lightheadedness, fainting, or near fainting, fatigue, shortness of breath, and slow pulse or bradycardia. 
So you would think like, because sometimes I, I'm asking students like, what happened if this SA node is not functioning? And they think like, oh my goodness, it should be like really, really bad. The person should die. But actually, no, sometimes we cannot even uh, diagnose it right away because a V node will take over and it's gonna be junctional read, right? Um, however, of course, we will have complication of defective SA node that will include arrhythmia, heart failure, stroke, possible stroke, possible cardiac arrest. Treatment of sick sinus syndrome may include regular checkups, medication, if needed surgery to implant a device to maintain a regular heartbeat or pacemaker. But the point is when SA node is damaged, then uh, AV node will take over the heart uh, rate will be slower, but it's not uh, really like emergency situation. Complications might be emergency, like stroke or cardiac arrest, but uh, um, six sinus syndrome uh, might be un de uh, detected for a while. Uh, but what happens if AV node is not function? Then we call it heart block. It can be is a partial or total heart block. Now, when AV node is not functioning, look, look over here. Let me let me go, just go back and uh, remind you where AV node is. Now, if we don't have this node functioning, then we cannot pass electricity from pacemaker to ventricle and ventricles cannot contract. So that's actually more serious condition than uh, dysfunction of SA node, right? So that's our um, heart block. Few or no impulses from SA node reach the ventricles. Heart block can be treated with implantation of a permanent pacemaker, which regulates the heartbeat. And another um, homeostatic imbalance, congestive heart failure or CHF. It's a progressive condition where cardiac output, that means the amount of blood that is pumped uh, per minute, is so low that blood circulation is inadequate to meet tissue needs. Blood often backs up and fluid can build up in the lungs. So if you wonder why it's called congestive, you know, sometimes you have your congestive nose, right? Your nose has like lots of mucus. That's what congestion is. Now, how this congestive heart failure? Because the fluid builds up in the lungs and your lungs are congest congested. Um, so it can be, um, heart failure uh, can result from different conditions. For example, stiffness of uh, ventricles, the heart can't uh, feel properly or stretched and thin chambers of uh, specifically ventricles and heart can pump. But in the both situation, we cannot produce adequate blood circulation uh, through the blood vessels. So why would we have uh, congestive heart failure? It can be caused by coronary atherosclerosis, um, that means that blood vessels of the heart itself became plugged um, and not enough oxygen delivered to the heart muscle. Uh, persistent high blood pressure, multiple myocardial infarction, or dilated cardiomyopathy that is actually shown over here when blood vessels uh, became uh, huge, but uh, muscle is weak and unable to pump um, necessary amount of uh, blood. Okay, so this was the last uh, slide that I wanted to cover today. Um, again, we covered uh, anatomy of the heart that is a part of the cardiovascular system. Um, thank you very much for watching and I hope it was helpful.